Whoever loves a brother and sister lives in the light. And in such a person there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates another believer is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, and does not know the way to go, because the darkness has brought out blindness. May the Lord's blessings to the hearing, reading, and doing of his word. Of our Bible, 
They're rooted in the spiritual practice of loving. This particular passage from the first letter of John also includes a commandment. Now it can be confusing. I don't know if you were confused when you heard those words or not. It's an old commandment. It's a new commandment. It's an old commandment. It's a new commandment. It's the very same commandment is what John, or the writer of this text, was trying to tell us. It wasn't about that old ten words in the, that are talked about in the Older Testament. It wasn't even specifically pointing out the two greatest commandments that Jesus gave according to some of our gospel texts. What is it? No. Commandment is not a law. It's not a rule that must be followed. It's not even the understood best as the divine rule. The commandment that's being talked about here is rather not so much a rule as a way, a way of being. You see, rules are those things that are set down on paper and then used to divide people for those who follow them versus those who don't follow them. The ways of God are those things that were talked about, verbally taught by people of faith as a way of living, not as a law to follow. Do you get the difference? It's a practicing, a putting into one's way of living what one believes are the ways of God. And specifically, this text says loving is the way of Jesus. Loving is the way of Jesus. Now, those ways, the practice of living according to what has been taught, have to do with light and darkness. Have you noticed how much earlier it's getting light in the morning? <laughs> Time's changing. <laughs> Don't get too excited yet. Have you noticed in the past week or so how illuminated that bright white moon is? Right now. It's been beautiful. But this text isn't talking about physical light and darkness. No, but about rather the spiritual lightness and darkness that happens in our souls. This writer reminds the reader here of this text that true light has already begun shining. We were gifted with it by Jesus, the Christ, when Jesus was born into the world. Jesus really was the light of their world, the way that showed their souls just who they were, and showed their spirits how it was that they were to live. That light of the world, the author says, is still shining on them. Even though Jesus wasn't physically walking around, still continuing to teach and heal and preach, and that light, the light of Christ, remained and continued to shine on them, I believe is the point that was being made. And in addition to that, according to this passage, they were called to live according to that life and to reflect that life 
among those who they live with. Now this being the light part isn't as easy necessarily as receiving the light, is it? Who likes to receive the light? Who likes to have the light shine upon them? Who doesn't, right? But being the reflection of that light takes another step of awareness in the understanding of the commandments that are spoken of here, those ways of being. And I know that we all understand that reflecting the light is not always as easy as just accepting the light or taking the steps to live the life as the way of Christ. We are called to make the life and love true in us, according to this text. Now, I'm sure we all have a general understanding of what is true and false, right? Anybody else have to take those tests? Although, it, Dean, as a math teacher, you probably didn't have too many true and false questions. <laughs> What's true and false for us isn't a matter of the way uh, we learn something, or necessarily even the way that we feel something. What's true and false for those who are followers of the light of Christ is a spiritual thing. The light of Christ is true always for us who are followers of Jesus Christ. But the, and the call to be the reflection of that light is also always true for us. It leads to more light being shared the same is true with darkness. Darkness is false. Darkness prevents us from totally accepting the light. And it makes it near impossible to reflect the light of Christ when we choose to live in darkness. We are called to be the light, to be the love of Christ. It does not mean accepting all behaviors or allowing ourselves to be abused. Some people think that if you live the love of Christ, then you love everybody. And that is true on a spiritual level. However, you don't have to love their behaviors or let yourself be abused to continue to shine the light of Christ from you. In fact, it's probably a more accurate reflection of Jesus' way to not accept the darkness of abuse or bad behavior into your life, because it will only cloud your life. Instead, you are, con are to continue to love the individual but not allow yourself to be drawn into those behaviors. Not allow yourselves to be, yourself to be abused. Instead, to continue to reflect the light of Christ in whatever circumstance you may find yourself in. That's what this text is talking about when it uses the word hate. We're not called to hate. Others. We are still called to love them in spite of some misbehaviors or abuse. But, and I should say, to realize that darkness, the hate that dark, the darkness that hate creates only leads to diminished light for yourself and among those whom you are called to love. Darkness, I mean hate, leads to hate, leads to hate. And the 
practice that he blinds all those, all those who are seeking on to the light shining on us and from us. It prevents us from seeing the light of Christ that is shining in others, even the ones with bad behaviors or who are uneasy, that do not reflect the light of Christ in us. Today, I believe, this text is a reminder that not only to those followers of Jesus at the end of the first century, but for those of us who are seeking to follow that way of Christ, the tradition passes on to us still in this 21st century. The tradition of John, the author of the last gospel, who informed the teacher that wrote this letter, calls us to remember that we are not only the beloved receiver of God's love and Christ's life, but the bearers of it. We are called to live in the light shown to us through Christ's ways. And just as Jesus did, to shine, to strive to overcome the darkness of hate by practicing love as much as we dare to. May we truly be the beloved of God and make it so. Amen. Amen. Amen.
that acknowledges our strength together, as well as the power, creativity, ideas, and parts we all bring when we are all one. To come to the table and taste and see that the Lord is good. Help us later on until we all can sing for good and right reasons, O oh, happy day. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to uh, prepare the elements that you have brought or received to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Let us remember now how uh, when he was gathered with his disciples, his friends and his family, family of choice, around a celebration table, Jesus took simple elements of bread and wine and transformed them, gave them a new meaning, and it is that meaning that we keep here today in this community that we practice. On that night, Jesus took bread from the table, gave thanks for it, and opened it. Then cast it among them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given for you, he said. When the meal ended, Jesus took a cup, the one that had been set aside in the hope of a coming Messiah. Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and then passed it among them, saying, Take this, all of you, drink it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of a new, everlasting promise. It will be given for you, for all, for forgiveness. Let us consecrate now the elements of our holy communion. For it is through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ that all glory and honor is yours, O Holy One, now and forever. We ask that you would bless, consecrate, transform these elements just as you did those elements long ago. Allow them to become for each of us as we need them to be now the body and the blood of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The meal is prepared. Let us share the peace. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you for every single person that is now a part of this holy meal. Thank you for having created them the way that they are and called them to this holy time that we share. I give thanks for the ways that you have shown your light on them and that they have shown their light to others. Thank you for the way that they have been loved by you and by others, and the way that they have shown that love to others. Pray that in this time of holy communion, they might experience even more fully the light and the love that the way of Jesus Christ has for them and that they might now be strengthened to live it 
more than ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jackson, for that word this morning. This afternoon, excuse me. Um, by way of announcements, I just have one. That the uh, Eastern Stars 242 group will be meeting on Wednesday at 5.30. If you would like to join us, please get in touch with Reverend Selena so that she can give you the link. Thank you. Uh, right now, I'd like to talk about giving. And when I talk about giving, it's a couple of Bible verses that come into mind. But the one that I like the most is 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, where it states, Each of you should give what you have, deciding in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Three, three elements I'd like to talk about this afternoon, and I won't leave long. One of them is the Delco Food Bank. That Delco Food Project where we are feeding the community. That's something that's very important. We're, we're, we're supplying nourishment for the community. We're letting our light shine. We're letting them know that, yes, the model that is here, we care, we love you, and we support you. Second one I'd like to talk about is spiritual growth, spiritual wealth spiritual giving. In order to continue to feed the spirits, others, we all know that we have to contribute to, to the church in order to keep our doors open. You know, the Delco Food Project we're doing for the community, doing physical healing, as well as spiritual. And we will, first of all, to continue to do that, we must Giving. Um, I'd like to thank Val for coming up with all those different uh, fundraising, which we'll much later. Another way to help give is on Facebook, you can raise for your birthday. Last year I raised, I asked for two, I raised $280 for the church. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. You just reach out to your friends and let them know any amount to do. Right now, we're doing this because we want to continue our growth within our church and among and let's stay a model day strong. Thank God bless you. Stand up and say the name of the world. Oh, <laughs> 
the beloved and receive the light and love of God. So ready to be the beloved that reflects the light and the love of God. Let's go forth and make it. Amen. 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 Amen.